For the YouTube Samurai Build Challenge, I made this extremely historically accurate sword. After 126 hours of studying the ancient art of feudal Japanese swordsmithing, contemporary bladesmiths have been trying to recreate period pieces like this one for years, but have missed some unexpected key elements that can only be incorporated after reading the recently discovered ancient text from the 8th and 9th centuries. While I am barred by ancient custom from verbally describing some of these lost techniques used in this video, I will be showing them in detail visually in the coming minutes. Now if you think I got a small detail wrong here or there, please give me some direction in the comment section below. Also if you love this build, feel free to let your imagination run wild and fake being an internet keyboard samurai for a day by giving me the funniest and most troll-like rebuke possible for the sword. At the end of the video, I'll be going over what I like and don't like about this blade as I normally do. Make sure to check out the sponsors of our challenge, watch the other channel's builds, and vote with the provided link in this video's description for your favorite samurai build.
Well, if you've made it this far, I'm sure you've realized that I was joking about this being a period piece from feudal Japan. It was a bad joke. I've really come to enjoy these challenge builds because they've allowed me to expand my skill set by making truly unique blades like this one that joins a Wakashaki blade and Habaki with an American Bowie handle. I am tentatively planning on a follow-up video to this one to answer questions about the build itself. So if you do have any specific questions, go ahead and put them in the comment section below with AMA for Ask Me Anything notated in front of your question so that I can find them easily. Also, as a gentle reminder, make sure to vote in this challenge. It's easy to do with the links in the top comment and the description below. Now I'm going to go over what I don't like about this blade, followed by what I do like about it. The first and largest issue with this blade is the solder job on the Hibaki. Now you can see here on the bottom that I have what looks like a void or a crack going along the entire length of the Hibaki. Now I think the solder job is actually good on the inside of the Hibaki closest to the tang. However, there are some voids on the outside and as I ground down to my desired dimensions, I noticed those voids, so that was a painful experience. Now I did go back and surgically try to fill in this void with some JB Weld and Q-tips, but honestly, I think it made it look worse. Normally, I would have remade this piece, but if I tried doing that on this build, I wouldn't have been able to get this video out on time, so the time constraints caused me not to make another Habaki. It's for this sole reason that I am reluctant to selling this knife, so it will end up with the other misfits at my house. The second dislike on this one is also related to the Habaki. I left a brute to forge finish on the rounded sections on the top of my Habaki where I bent it around. And I thought this would look cool, but in reality, it just draws your eyes to the most unfinished part of the blade. So if I had to redo it, I would finish these uh, rounded sections of the Habaki to the same finish of the rest of the knife. Lastly on the dislikes, I wish I would have rounded these bottom two corners of the handle a little more. Uh, I left them a little more square than I would like, and I can tell in hand that, you know, I can feel those corners a little more than I would like to. Uh, if I would have rounded these over, I would have also needed to have changed the dimensions of the front spacer, as well as the front copper spacer would have also needed to be changed ever so slightly. Now with the dislikes out of the way, let's get into some of the parts of the blade that I love. Firstly, I think the meshing of these two styles came out really cool. You know, it's not every day that you see a Western style buoy handle, with the Habaki and a Wakashaki blade. It really makes me wonder if I could put a Habaki onto a traditional Bowie's Ricasso, and that may be something I need to investigate in the future. I'll look into it. I'm also a fan on how the finish of the Damascus turned out on this blade. I think the you know low layer count's cool and all, but it's really the finish that I'm keying in on here. Uh, it's taken me a while to get this right with the multiple etching cycles, the cleaning up of the blade in between cycles, and then the coffee etch. And I really learned a lot from watching Kyle Royer's and Tyrell Knifeworks videos, so thank you guys. Uh, Y'all have brought my Damascus, I think, to the, the next level. Some other small points in the wins category would be the construction is super solid. I love through tangs with the finial on the back. I feel like that is a nice, robust way to make a buoy handle. And it looks cool with the finial being shown in the back like this. The wood from Oleg is really pretty as it always is. This is a green dyed willow that's been stabilized. So I really like the way that that looks. And lastly, the edge came out super sharp on this one. I was a little apprehensive putting this long of a blade in the Wicked Edge system, uh, but it did a great job. So I'm really happy with the sharpness of this full flat grind blade. So even with the caveats and the dislike section, I wanna be clear that I really do love this blade. I think it turned out cool. You know, there are some flaws here and there, but that's handmade knife making for you. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to make cool blades like this that are abnormal. So uh, thanks for all the organizers of the challenges, and I hope that I get to do more of them in the future. If you like this video, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below. I'm trying to hit the coveted 100,000 subscriber mark uh, by 2024, so we'll see if that happens or not. Uh, but your subscription would be greatly appreciated. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.